Three, two. You're not smiling. <laughs> you look dead. Smile. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Open Kitchen with Andrew. I am so excited to have my mom here with me. March. <laughs> that March. That's not an intro. Is that how you tell Margie? That's, that's what you say to people? March. You don't even say hello. Hey everyone, welcome back to Open Kitchen with Andrew. I'm Andrew and today we are making my great Aunt Nancy's on a Zet cookies. I am here with my mom who will be showing me how to make this recipe for the second time. We did make some last night and tried them and they were delicious. I'm March from New Jersey. <laughs> Mom, what ingredients do we have in front of us today? Because we are jumping right into it. This is a super easy recipe. Can we insert image of recipe? Oof. Perfect, great. It is super easy. We are throwing everything into the stand mixer. We're mixing it up, we're letting it rest, we're baking it twice, and we're cutting them once. So it's great. But what ingredients do we have here in front of us? We have our butter. Yep. And our eggs and our sugar. That's flour. But okay. we do have, we do we have, have sugar. Our sugar. Okay. And this extract, we had to go to many different stores to find this extract. How many stores did we go to? Uh, about five or six. Went to five or six. And then last night I actually had to walk to Ralph's to get some and they only had three packages left. I bought all three because if I want to make this again later, cause they're that good, we're going to do it. We did want to substitute Anazette liqueur, but you can't find that in California. They don't even know what it is. She's really not happy about that. So if you don't have anise extract, you can substitute anisette liqueur. We've got our baking, baking powder. Baking powder. We've After got... we bake them, we are gonna sprinkle some anise sugar on them to give them just a little pop. Vanilla paste, and we have our anise seed. Star anise. Yes. We did this about a week ago. The longer you leave the star anise, is it anise or anise? You're saying anise, but it's like star anise. You say tomato, I say tomato. Okay, star anise. Mix it into the sugar about a week in advance. We did this last week. We're gonna show you the first step in this recipe, which would be mixing this sugar. This is what you're gonna top them with. This is what gives them a ton of extra flavor. So we have an empty jar that we sterilized. We're gonna add a little sugar to the bottom. Just a tad. Did I have okay, it? I'm gonna throw one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight star anise in there. And I think that's good. And then I'm gonna throw a few more on top. So I would say probably every day I would just shake the sugar to make sure everything is incorporated. And this will turn your sugar into star anise sugar, really. It will give all that flavor and the sugar will take that on. You can use that for this recipe. You can also, if you love this flavor, use it for coffee. You can bake other things with it, right? I mean, you can really do anything. Put the sugar to the side and let's start baking. We're putting a half a pound of butter half into pound of butter. our stand mixer. Now, where did you learn this recipe? How was this handed down to you? So my Aunt Nancy was a wonderful baker and she made these cookies every holiday for Christmas and for Easter. And when I became a young wife, I wanted the recipe so that I could make it for my husband and eventually for my children, my family, my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. My grandmother came over from Italy with my grandfather from Messina, Italy, and Aunt Nancy was born here. My mother had 12 children. I, my mother had 12 siblings, I'm sorry. Her and Aunt Nancy were the closest sisters, so we spent a lot of time at Aunt Nancy's house. Uncle Leo had a garden in the back. We learned how to save the seeds. So just a little, we are digressing. But it's okay. We can go on a tangent for a moment. If he had uh, these wonderful tomatoes that he would grow, so he would take them and get newspaper and put the tomato in the newspaper and cover it and save the seeds for the following year. And then of course you would have even better tomatoes for the next year. So I learned a lot of these uh, little things from my aunt and my uncle Leo, God rest their soul. Uh, we had a lot of fun growing up, learning these different things. I never knew that he would save those seeds. Are oh, you yeah. going to do that next year? I'm hoping to. Hope is not a strategy. You can just do it. Okay. So we are adding all of our wet ingredients into here. So let's do it. Uh, give me the anise extract. We're adding both of these in. The vanilla. How much are we adding? Do you remember? A teaspoon of vanilla. A teaspoon of vanilla. And a teaspoon of water. Yes. A teaspoon of water. Okay. I'll do the vanilla. A teaspoon of vanilla. And this is vanilla paste. 
The recipe calls for a vanilla <clears throat> extract, but this also adds like those beautiful like flecks of vanilla throughout. It is really delicious and beautiful at the same time. Can I have the anise seed? Anise seed. Yes, four teaspoons. Can you open it for me? My sister-in-law, Valerie, shout out to Valerie in Tom's River, New Jersey. <laughs> we got the recipe from Aunt Nancy and as young wives, we would make these cookies, mm -hmm. me and Aunt, Aunt Valerie. You make it seem like you were like married off at 14. 19, got married at 19. Married at 19. We're doing two cups of sugar. Love to hand you the sugar. We are creaming our butter and our wet ingredients together with the sugar. This is very important in baking. This is the difference between getting a dense and heavy cookie or cake or getting a super light and fluffy cookie or cake. So if you want it dense and heavy, which I don't think anyone does, don't do this step, but I know that you want it super light, super fluffy, super airy. This is going to aerate the butter and like the sugar crystals are going to essentially aerate the butter, get a nice and fluffy. Can I do that? You can do everything you want. So what we're looking for as this goes is to cream it together. We want everything combined. And then you'll also notice that the butter starts to change color. Um, so we want to get that color change. We want it like opaque, um, just like a little bit lighter. And you're doing this before you add any of your eggs as well. While this is mixing, you mentioned that you got this from Aunt Nancy. Now, I recently discovered that Aunt Nancy's name was not Nancy when she came over. Um, her name was... Nunciata. Nunciata, and they changed it for her in Ellis Island. Did they? They did. Is it on the uh, birth it's, certificate? Yes, it's on the birth certificate. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Were there any other people's names in our family that were changed when they came over? I'm not sure. Katano, Tom. Oh, Katano to Tom. Nunziata. Katina, Katina. my mother, mm -hmm. and Katana. So my grandmother had four girls and eight boys. So she had Gitana, which is the female, and Gitano, which was the male. Gitano and Katana. was Tom. Oh, and Gitana was Tom, yes. But, but what was the female? It was always Aunt Katana. Oh, okay. Nancy was Nunciata, which I find a more beautiful name. I can't believe they just changed it. Do you see the color change? I see the color change. What yeah. is your favorite memory making this dish? Every time I made cookies, my mother, your grandmother, okay. would eat the whole batch. I used to get so mad at her because we would go, bake all these cookies, and before you know it, half the batch is eaten by Tina. She well, couldn't help herself. Mikey does the same thing, so I have to place a cookie hidden somewhere, either in the microwave or in the refrigerator, maybe even in the freezer, to make sure that it won't get eaten and I can have one um, because I guess my baking or our baking is that good that they just want to eat it up. All right, I think we can see here that our butter has changed color. It was yellow, but now it's this nice white color and you can see all the anise seeds. Do you wanna give it a smell? It smells good, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, we're gonna add six eggs. Do you want me to use the bowl? Yesterday I told Andrew, crack them in the bowl in case there's a shell. Of course, Andrew said, I don't get any shells in it. I don't get any shells. Did I get any shells yesterday? No, you didn't. I know. I always get shells in mine. I can teach, do you want me to teach you? You just do a light tap. Yeah. You just do a light tap. Let's, let me try. Go ahead. Okay. So we're adding egg by egg. So we're adding six eggs, one mm -hmm. at a time, and you want everything to be incorporated here. I know what's wrong. Oh, but why did I try? <laughs> That's our, well, you didn't get a shell. I didn't get a shell. So great job, mom. <laughs> but can I show you what, what I actually think you're doing wrong? Sure. You're hitting it on the corner. You're right. Which is causing the shell to break and go inwards. Right. I'm hitting it on a flat surface, which is just causing it to break evenly. So you're hitting it in, so you're getting those small shells. I I'm hitting it on a flat. Is that a, what I've been doing wrong for? I don't All know. All these years. How many eggs is that now? I lost track when you dropped it in the thing. Five? Mm-hmm. Let me try. I think you can do it. You think I can? Mm-hmm. And we're going in for six. 
What if I get shell in there? I'm afraid. I don't think you should be afraid, I'm but go ahead, try it. Did you get a shell? I didn't get a shell. You need to trust yourself. We're gonna let this mix and combine for probably another 30 seconds. And then we are going to scrape down the sides of our bowl and add in our flour and baking powder. We have now mixed for another minute. We've turned this off and we're going to add our flour and our baking powder together. So we're looking for five and a half cups of flour. So that's two, this is three, this is four. All right, we're at five and we're going to reserve the tiny bit we have left to use for our work service later. One tablespoon of baking powder. Just drop it in, we're about to sift it again. Okay. So do you know why we're sifting? Why? Again, it's to create a light and fluffy batter. You don't want any clumps or anything like that. Now this is like a, it's fine. I guess here we are making a mess all over the place. You're seeing the real deal. This is also helping to incorporate the baking powder evenly in there. If you were to just dump this in, you might get certain parts with big clumps of flour. You might get certain parts with big clumps of baking powder, which is like metallic-y in taste. And I think you can just see like how, Looks I guess nice. like look at the difference in the flour. So if you look at the flour before it's sifted, and then we look at the flour after. Beautiful. If you are a singer. Mm -hmm. by trade, I guess we could say, right? Yeah. You're in the arts. Okay. You're a music teacher. Yeah. You're a singer. You're a performer. Mm -hmm. You're a director. I'm a director. I was hoping you could give us a tune. Sing us something here. You didn't know this was coming. Is that I why? I didn't know that was coming. Well, I think it's like, it's time for you to be surprised. What do you I, want me to sing? Well, for, while you think about it, I did ask my mother the other day. So yesterday, Mikey took her to an ice bath and to the gym and she said, no, I can't do it. Our vacations, she has always said, I can't do it. We went zip lining, right. which you said you couldn't and you did it. She's terribly afraid of heights. What else did we do? The paddle board. And, and she said that the best thing that she looks back on is the time we spent together and how much fun she had. So I guess that relates to here. This is your moment. This is my moment. What do you, what do you want to sing? Why don't you sing with me? I'm not a singer. Oh, you're singing in the car all the time. Yeah, but that's different. No, that's not different. I'm going to add spoonfuls of this to our mixture. It's okay that our wet ingredients are on here. This is fine. While my mom thinks of her song. I have this thing in my brain that every time somebody says something, I think of a song. So he just said spoonfuls. Oh, so a spoonful of Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go come, down. Come on, louder, louder. The medicine go down. Medicine go down. <laughs> just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in the most delightful, delightful way. There you go. Okay, are you happy now? Yeah. I was a freshman in high school. Freshman in and high school. And you were your freshman year in college. And I finally figured out what I wanted to be when I grew up. Which was? A music teacher. Yeah. And with the help of my husband, who took care of everything at home, while I went to school full time and worked full time, realized my dream to become a teacher. And I also started directing plays. Yes. So this year, our play is gonna be The Little Mermaid. I like wish people could smell it because it smells so good. But I'm just gonna add the rest of this. And we made a huge mess, so just be prepared when you're sifting your ingredients. We've got a little bit more of mixing, so I think you should give us something from The Little Mermaid. Seaweed is always greener in somebody else's lake. You dream about going up there, but that is a big mistake. Dake. Just look at the world around you, right here on the ocean floor. I can't remember the rest of the words. Actually, I sing it while the kids are practicing. Da, 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 da. Under the sea. See, there you go. Under the sea. You've got it. Things will be brighter. Better. Better. When you're. Under the sea? Wetter. Oh, when you're wetter. <laughs> I don't know the words. Under the sea. <laughs> we are mixed. So a few songs and a stand mixer and you've got yourself some cookies. We are going to transfer them into this bowl. It's okay that there's a little flour. Um, on it and we're gonna let them rest. 
Now we need the cookies to rest for about two hours, I would say. Can leave it overnight if you want. You can leave them overnight if you want. That's fine as well. But two hours at minimum, we did make a batch last night that has been resting overnight. Why do you think it's like important to let it rest? Well, you have to let it get cold because it's too sticky to work with. Yeah, so the butter has melted really and we're like turning it and it's in this machine which is making it warm and melting all the butter. So if you were to try and shape this into the uh, biscotti cookie, you really wouldn't be able to. If you were to cook this right now, and put it in the oven, your cookie would just like get flat and the butter would melt out the side. So it looked like really oily. Whereas now if you let it rest, the butter firms up and when it hits the heat of the oven, which we have preheating at 375 right now, it just like puffs a little bit. Do you wanna take a taste? You embarrassed? Taste when really did good. that stop us? I don't know, it never stopped me. Oh. <laughs> it's Very good. nice. So this will make Four loaves. Um, loaves of cookies. I think we counted 15 each loaf. Yes. So 60 cookies. A lot of cookies. And they can be kept out on the countertop, in the fridge. I would say just put them into a container. Best with coffee, I would say. We're going to put that in the fridge and let it rest. Movie magic. Oh, my God. This was what we made last night. We'll replace it with this one and get started on this. Step one, we mixed all of our wet ingredients into the stand mixer. Step two, we added the eggs and dry ingredients, which we sifted together, and then we let it rest for two hours. We did ours last night, so we let it rest overnight. And like we said, this is going to make four loaves. We're gonna make two for you today. What you need to do is dust your work surface. We, maybe we over dusted here, but whatever. And you're going to split your dough into two even um, portions. Portions, thank you, mom. And you're gonna work with one portion, I'm gonna work with another. What are we going for on shape here? A nice, small loaf. Think of it like a flat baguette, right? A flat baguette. And how flat are we trying to go here? Half an inch, inch? Ha half an inch. Half an inch. But what did you say this morning? when we... I said that you made them better than I did. She said mine looked better than hers. His looked better than mine. She said, do mine again, because my yours looks better. I'm just in the moment, just doing what I'm feeling, you know? Yours looks great. Ciabatta. 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 Like a little loaf of ciabatta. Mine's a little thick. I'm gonna have to make it a little. You're good. Now, did you make these already this year? Right before we came, I made them. Who'd you make them with? Just me by myself. I oh. didn't have you. Oh, you wanted to test the recipe. You want to make sure you're If ready. I can't have you, I don't, don't want, want nobody, baby. baby. If I can't have you. Ha, ha, ha. See yeah. what I mean? All right. <laughs> I feel good. See, you did a good job. I feel good. See, you started me now. <laughs> All right. I'm, hold on. I'm stirring our gravy real quick. Hey, you asked for it. Now you got it. So we've made these into half inch loaves of ciabatta, whatever you want to call it. We're going to put them into the oven at 375 for 20 minutes, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Then we're taking them out of the oven. We're gonna cut them and bake them again. You could easily bake them once, which would create a soft cookie, but we're looking for biscotti, something firm, something you can dip in your coffee and will hold up and still give you a crunch. So you're gonna bake it twice. If you want a softer cookie, bake it once but we're going for my great Aunt Nancy's, your Aunt Nancy's biscotti cookies, following the recipe to a T. You ready? But, I mean, bring it over, let's go. All right. Thank you. Got mine? Go ahead. I got you. You wanna put them in? You wanna open the door? Sure. 20 minutes, going in. So it has been 20 minutes. We're taking our cookies out of the oven. We are gonna cut them once and then we're putting them back in the oven. They're gonna go in the oven for seven minutes? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And then you turn them? Flip them, 10 minutes more, and then they are done. And then we get to put all of the final touches and I guess I have a little surprise for you at the end. Oh boy, so I love ready. surprises. All right, but here we are. Oh boy, that looks great. It does look great and it smells 
Amazing. Do you want to cut them? You can cut them. You sure? I'm sure. You a little nervous? And you want to cut it on a diagonal. I knew it was coming. Cut them on a diagonal. And it's, I mean, just super easy. Just We're using our bench scraper. It makes it very easy to cut through these. I can't tell you how many times I took a knife to cut it and I made a mess and a half. I'll take that one at the end. That you can feel like the heat coming off of them. Okay, so now what do you do? We turn them. Turn them over. They're really hot. You're just gonna. Ooh! How are you doing that? Years of experience, They're Andrew. Just, your, years of experience. Your hands have lost all feeling, I guess, in those in those years of experience. I can't do it. I'll do these. Those look beautiful. They do look great. So they're going back into the oven now for 10 minutes. We're gonna pull them out, flip them, and then we get to put the final touch of sugar and a little bit of a surprise. We have our biscotti cookies out of the oven. They have cooled just a little bit. They're still a little warm, which is good. And we are going to top them with our anise sugar. Also, I'm spicing it up. This is not in the recipe, but we are going to melt a little bit of chocolate and we're gonna half dip some of them. It's just going to make them even better. Yeah, I know you like that. Now we could melt our chocolate on the stove over a double boiler. We're putting this in the microwave, so get ready. My tip is if it goes in the microwave, just 10 seconds out of time, because if you burn the chocolate, there's no going back from it. You have to start over. Did you know you should put it at 50 power? I do now. Cook power, 50%. 50%. So in addition to everything else, I did own a art and music studio and we gave cooking classes to kids. I gave music lessons to kids. And one of the things was to take the chocolate and melt it at 50% mm, okay. and stir it each time. Can you give me a spoon? I can give you a spoon. Even though it's gonna take a little bit of time. It will take a little bit of time, but you're not gonna burn anything. You don't wanna burn is, it. Which is good. We are topping these with the sugar. Mm -hmm. How do you usually do this? I've never been part of this step. You just give a little bit. Okay. That's it. And that gives it its little extra. Zing. There you go. Well, that was simpler than I expected. What'd you think? I, I don't gonna... know what you were gonna do, you just but, sprinkle but it you on. just sprinkle them on. All right, let's check the chocolate. Why don't you monitor the chocolate? I bought my parchment paper from Restaurant Depot. I have a thousand sheets of parchment paper, so get ready to bake a lot with me or cook a lot with me just in general. We're gonna lay one out to make sure we can put this on and I'm gonna get one more tray. I'm putting it on the tray to make sure that I can also transfer it right into the... So I put it in for a minute, but after 30 seconds, I check it. That's how we did it at Creative Kids. So I'm putting my tray here for the parchment paper because I want to transfer it into the refrigerator to make sure that it can cool and the chocolate can harden up as well. Good? You feel good about that? I think we're good. Now, do you dip them in chocolate yourself? I don't dip them in chocolate. Well, welcome to my world. We're doing it. I think just half. Oh yeah. Ooh, that actually looks really good. Go ahead, dip away. Have some fun with it. Maybe use the spoon to coax it up a little bit. Yeah. I'm making a mess. It's okay, you can make a mess. You don't have to worry. Perfection is not what we're going for, it's flavor. Perfect. That looks great. There you go. That's it. Ooh! That you got any good. sprinkles? Well, I, but, I mean, come on. What are we? We're just going overboard now? <laughs> <laughs> you, I do have sprinkles. Would you like sprinkles? We can do whatever you want. No, I just thought it would be festive for the holiday. The holiday's over. The Close. holiday's never over with you, Andrew. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Three. You have to eat bite at the same time. Okay? Ready? Three, two, one. Mmm. Oh my god. You have to try the one with chocolate. Switch. What do you think? The chocolate's good. Chocolate's good, but... 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 If you just want the taste of the on the set. Okay. You have it without the chocolate. Sometimes I like overpowering. You have a little chocolate on your well, there you have it. We have my great aunt Nancy and my mom's aunt Nancy's biscotti cookies. 
Thank you so much for joining us. And mom, it was great to have you on today. Thank you, Andrew, for inviting us here to sunny California from uh, New Jersey. And I had a blast cooking with you. Good. And I hope that we can have many more experiences like this. Thanks, mom. Marge from New Jersey. There you go. You heard it here. Uh, but thank you again. It was great to do this with all of you. This is a super easy recipe. You saw we just put all of it into the stand mixer, mixed it up, baked it, cut it once, baked it again, and called it a day. Um, you can add any toppings you want, so please feel free if you have pistachios, if you have sprinkles, if you just want to do the sugar, do it all. Have fun with this. and. Uh, please like and subscribe and follow. And if you make this recipe, tag me. I would love to see the different variations that everyone has. So thanks. See you later. Bye-bye. You had to sing quote. So long. I'll be the same. Nadjur. Nadjur? Nadjur? Adieu. 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 To you. you and you and you. Good. <laughs> no, she doesn't do that. Yes, she does. She does, but that wasn't the no. Good. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye.